So we're in the middle of the of the of the, of the text, which I hope everybody has. We sent it again last night. I think we're up to chapter Dalit on page 40. If you have the same page numbers as I do, which I think you do, it's page 40 in the text, right hand column. Let's bring us up to speed. So where are we up to? So very briefly, it was a very simple question. Avram Avino builds three altars. Rashi explains the rationale for the first two, but strangely doesn't explain the third. What's the rationale for the first two? The first one, he builds this Mizbeach, the altar, thanking Hashem in recognition and in gratitude for the blessings that he'll, that he'll be given. He'll have children he'll have, and he's giving in this land. So he builds a Mizbeach. Then a verse later, he builds a second one in a place near Ai, Aleph Yud. In English, AI, that's how it's spelled. Why does he build it there? Because he has a prophecy that in the future, in the beginning of the conquest of Eretz Yisrael under Yeshua, there will be a mishap, a transgression. A man called Ochan will secretly take booty for himself after the fall of Yericho of Jericho. This causes the next battle. In the next battle that follows, 36 Jews fall which was extremely alarming, that God had promised them a miraculous conquest. They realized, Yeshua realized that there had been a transgression and Achan was discovered through the Urim Betumim, the high priest's breastplate. He was identified and dealt with and things proceeded there without mishap. But Avram prayed it could have been, it could have been a calamity. And relatively speaking, things, Teshuvah, and things proceeded. That's why he built the second one. So he built the second Mizbeach in the place right there where this future event would happen as a prayer to achieve atonement, as a prayer for his children in the future. The third one he built in Hebron. And we read, and he came to Hebron and he built a Mizbeach there, implying that somehow this Mizbeach is connected to the location Hebron, but Rashi doesn't explain what the connection is. Why would he build him his Bayach there? Now, it's true before that, he received even greater promises from God, more expanded promises about his children being as numerous as the dust of the earth and so on. Um, but he doesn't build him his Bayach where he hears that. He travels, he comes to heaven, and the Torah says he arrived there and there he built it. So why doesn't Ash explain? The silence is strange, and that's what we're explaining. The explanation in summary so far is that whatever, it's a famous statement of our sages, Maisa Ovis Simen Lebanim, the deeds of the forefathers are a sign for their children. Now, the meaning of that is, explains Hasidus, it's not merely a sign that what happens to them, you can be sure will happen down the road. And moreover, the leaders of the day need to look at how our forefathers dealt with those situations and derive lessons. That's one meaning of this. The deeper meaning is that what happens to the forefathers paves the way. It's not just history repeating itself. What they do, they open up the channels and they create the, uh, the virtues, the mitzvahs, the many things that they did because of what they did. We received certain mitzvahs in, in Torah and certain events. So what they did carves out, paves the way, trods the path for the children, bequeaths these events as gifts, as a legacy to their children. So these three altars are a legacy, a bit. they bequeath, they set in motion, they're the foundation of, of what? Of the three functions of the altar, the future altar, the altar, the Mizbeach, in the Beis Amigdash, and we identified as follows. The Gemara famously says that the word Mizbeach, which means altar, hints to a fusion of three words, namely three functions that the Mizbeach has. Actually, it's four words, but three categories. Just like there are four kinds of sacrifice, but three categories. Let's refresh your memory. So the meaning is mazin. The Mizbeach brings nourishment, sustenance. Meziach removes harsh decrees. 
Mechaper atones, Mechavev endears. So all of those four descriptions are fused together and make the word Mizbeach, hinting to these four functions. But as just mentioned, four functions, but really three categories, because atone and remove harsh decrees is one of the same general idea. It is, well, why does a harsh decree happen? Because of transgression. It's something negative. That's the simple common denominator. It's something negative that the Mizbeach uh, protects us from. So forgiveness, atonement, and removing harsh degrees is one general category, two details in one category. So it's three categories in summary. Let's make it simple so we remember the three because it's we're talking about the three altars. We have to remember the three and what's what. The Mizbeach nourishes, atones, endears. Atones, protects, and then endears. Likewise, we learned that there are four kinds of korban, but three categories. There is the shlomim, the peace offering. Why is it called a peace offering? And it's brought, and it's brought most often as a thanksgiving. That's its purpose, to express thanks. The thanksgiving offering is a peace offering, a shlomim. What's unique about the shlomim? Shalom, peace. It engenders peace between all parties. God, the koyan that brings it on behalf of the Israelite and the Israelite. In what sense? All partake of its meat. Some is consumed on the altar, some is eaten by the koyan, and some is eaten by the Jew. That, so it nourishes. Ah, It literally nourishes. All are consuming, all are nourished by it. So that corresponds to the nourishing component of the Mizbech. It brings down sustenance, panosa, to the world, to the Jewish people and to the world. And I stress to the world because the Gemara says that if the nations of the world would know how much benefit they received and blessing from the service of the Jew in the Holy Temple, not only would they have not have tempted and did destroy it, but they would have sent legions to protect it. So that's the first thing. Shlomim, the peace offering, corresponds to amazing, nourish. Then there's two kinds of atonement offerings, the chatos and the osham. The sin offering, the guilt offering, without repeating what's, what they brought atonement for, but in general, the chatos, the sin offering, brings atonement for transgression of any negative commandment that a person did unwittingly. It's a very broad category. The guilt offering is specific sins, like misappropriating uh, holy objects belonging to the temple, using it for private use, swearing falsely, and another category. So that, that's all, it's all guilt, but it's two categories within sin. Hence, we also had the Mizbeach has two words. One removes harsh decrees, the other one atones. It's two categories within neutralizing the negative. One category, two details. And finally, there's the carbon oil, the carbon oil, which is completely consumed on the, on the Mizbeach. It's the sacrifice of the highest order. It's the greatest sanctity, most stringent rules. Um, it was brought by the individuals, for example, when they came to the base of Migdash during the three pilgrims to see God and be seen by God. One of the offerings is the carbon oil. The daily offerings in the temple brought on behalf of all cloud Yisrael, morning and evening, in which we have Shachas and Mincha, is a carbon oil, and many other examples. This is totally consumed on the altar. No, not the Koya, not Israelite has benefit of the meat. So this represents what? The third category, endear. What endears us to God, of course, is total devotion. Total devotion is our most precious um, uh, quality. It's the most precious quality the human being can exhibit is to devote totally. So this is mechavev, endears. Rabbi, can I just, yes. can I just ask, when would they bring the peace offering? Pardon? When would they bring the peace offering? The peace offering was generally a voluntary offering and usually a thanksgiving. For example, um, after childbirth, thanksgiving, um, we make the birchas ha we make a blessing after having traveled overseas. There's four, four uh, situations that a person would make such a blessing. 
all of them emerging from potential danger. One of them is traveling overseas, the other one is coming out of prison um, and so on. So that person will bring a peace offering, a thanksgiving offering. So that's one example. But in, it's in, it, it can be brought any time by a person, and usually it's, it's gratitude. It's not the only time. There are other offerings that are also like that. And just to tell you, the laws of, of Karbanis are thousands of laws. It's a very, very, uh, one of the most complex um, uh, uh, subjects in halacha. As we can see when we learn the Rambam, the latest Chumashim, both the art scroll and others, they had like in the back of the, if you look in the back, ta ta tables identifying all the sacrifices and what they use. It's a complex table. You get an idea of, uh, of when and what. Huh? I'm sorry? On Sunday's assembly, wasn't that the Shlomo? No, it's a carbon oil. It's a carbon oil. The Kayin always said brought the hide. Huh? The Kayin gets the hide. Didn't like, so not yeah, one second. So we talk about the meat so now. Now we identify that like everything in Torah, everything is integrated. Everything is integrated means there's the macro, there's the micro. Truths keep on emerging seamlessly and in a unified way on many levels. Namely, in the same way that we identified right now, three kinds of sacrifice, the peace offering, the atonement offering, the endearment offering in Hebrew, the shlamim, chatas, asham, one category, oila, we identified in terms of the peace offering, everybody is nourished, the sin offering, it's only the koyen who eats of the meat and the altar and the, the oila, which means to ascend, it's completely consumed on the altar. Nobody eats of its meat. However, specifically, every korban has all three, all, three, all three components, specifically. How so? What's common to all sacrifices is the blood must be offered on the altar. Now, the blood, offering of the blood, as we explained last week, this is the atonement. That affects atonement. How? Why well, it's the connection to offering of the blood? Because the sin is done generally because the blood boiled, either out of anger or lust or whatever it is. It's indulgent in the physical. By offering the blood, you're now saying, my energy I now rededicate to you. I'm offering my, my life to you. I'm dedicating that energy that I expended in the wrong places now to you lifting, offering the blood. So every sacrifice has an element of atonement, even if it's a peace offering, which is not overtly atonement, it's thanksgiving, but there's the atonement component because, because every offering is the offering of the blood. Every offering, also there's some level of benefit, even, even certainly the peace offering and the sin offering Somebody's eating of its meat, either everybody or at least the koyan in the case of the sin offering. But even the carbon oil, there is a benefit, the hides. Not the meat, but the hides are given to the koyanim on duty at the time. So there's some benefit of nourishment, even from the oil that's completely offered to God. And every carbon also has this element of endearment because when the first temple stood, going back to the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, so this is over a thousand years, well over a thousand years, when offering was brought on the Mizbeach, a heavenly fire descended and consumed it. Display of God's love and endearment. My child, God embraces the offering. So if you look specifically, there's this element, these three elements in every carbon. So now, so now we've identified these three elements, every carbon to one degree or another, nourishes, endears, uh, nourishes, atones, and endears. Everyone. In the bigger picture, it's more specific to the different carbonists. That's their dominant component. But subtly, it's in all of them. We're clear? So that's the summary. It comes down to three, and we're going to get back to Avram, the three altars that he offered. So the conclusion is that the three general effects, components of all Karbanis on the Mizbeah is nourish, sustenance, atone, forgive, and endear. Now we're going to translate this, friends, on a personal current level. We're not studying history, and we're not even studying what's going to be when Mashiach comes. 
that too. We're starting, we're learning what is now. As everybody knows, our davening is in place of Korbanus. It's already daven, Shachas, Mincha, and and Musaf, and so on. So all of these components of the Korban are part of our davening, which is our service of God. Let's see it. So now on page 40, we're on page 40, uh, chapter 5, Ois Hey. Yodua, please follow along in the text if you're able to. Yodua, it's known, Shavidis is that the service of the Karbanda is Nikras, Pesham Avidistan. Of all the things, of all the services that were done in the Beis Amigdash, it's the sacrifices that's called service. Avida. Mishum, why? Shibo, Mizbate, Klolo, So Ingin, Davidis Hashem. Because looking at the sacrifices, they contain the general service of God. The menorah and the other things are details, specifics. The menorah, the showbread, the table, it's all part, part of the service of God, but they are specific niches, as it were, in the service of God. The general avoda applicable to all Jews at all times are the korbanis. And therefore, the, the offerings. They are moving to Keshem Shekorbanis. So just like we identified in Kalbonis, the Yeshnam Gimbal in Yonim Hanal gets very beautiful now, friends. We identified the three dimensions of the Korban, of every Korban. Kamoikin, likewise, but again, the Klolos in Davides Hashem, in the service of God, now you and I, Shigimbal Chalukus Bahem, there are three levels in our service of God, three dimensions, three components. Number one, Rishi, so the founding, the first one is, Havoid, the Torah Mitzvahs, Torah mitzvahs, learning Torah, doing mitzvahs. What's that? That's nourishment. Moza in hanefesh that nourishes the soul, that's fulfilling. You feel your mind, you understand Torah. You do mitzvahs and you see the benefit, what it brings to your life and how beautiful it is. It satiates, it nourishes. That's the number one ground entry level. This is beautiful. This is fulfilling. This is a life of meaning 24-7 from cradle to the, mo to the moment that the soul leaves the body and beyond. Like we say every night in Mairiv, Tayyar is our life. Our life. Our breath that fills us, that nourishes us. That's what it says about Tayyar. About Mitzvah, it says... The Pasik says in Pashas Achrim Mois, Asha quote, here it is, Asha Yasa, Oysam Adam, look at italics, the Chai Baham. Hashem says, do them and live by them. Moreover, Kiyadu, as it's known, Sharamach Mitzvis Esa, the 248 positive commands, Haim correspond, Keneged Ramach Evodim. The 248 limbs of the body, which means you do this particular mitzvah, you strengthen, you nourish. That limb is strong and healthy. It doesn't mention it, but the 365 prohibitions correspond to the 365 main arteries. What's the point of an artery? It's to see to it that the blood is not diffused and wasted, but comes to each part of the body in and the appropriate life-giving way. That's what a negative commandment is. The 365 negative commandments, prohibitions, correspond to, correspond to the 365 main arteries of the body. What's a negative commandment? Don't put your energy here. No, 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 no. Here. Don't diffuse your life, your blood, in the wrong places. And bringing about, God forbid, if the arteries burst inside and the blood goes where it shouldn't go, you think, oh, more blood is better. No, it's not. It's got to be focused, got to be contained. That, that can be, uh, on the contrary, life-threatening. So the negative commandments, life like this, not like this. Clear? So there's the positive commandments corresponding to the actual limbs, and the negative commandment, which is make sure that the limbs are animated and so on appropriately. There's kosher love, and there's not kosher love. That's what the negative commandments tell you. This, not this, to cite an example. 
to conclude category one, so therefore, when a Jew fulfills Torah mitzvahs, level one, corresponding to the first aspect of the Mizbeach of the Korbanos, he is nourished. He draws down the life force of his soul into his limbs. He's alive. Every limb is alive and vibrant because he uses every limb and every part of his body in the service of Hashem. So it's alive and it's sensitive and it's feeling and it's vibrant and it's full of energy and full of simcha. That's the, the ground level. This is beautiful and wonderful. I can't wait to do another mitzvah. Because it's nourishing. Healthy. The most healthy nourishment possible. Kosher. That's level one. You hit number six, thanks. Just pick it up and hit six, yeah. If it's, if it's the door, it could be a phone call. Okay. My limb is in higher than this. Higher level of service. This is Teshuva. Why is Teshuva higher? Repentance. Because the Gam Kashe Chota Upogam over the Saderech Rahman Litzlon. We're human. Hashem made us this way. Transgression is bound to happen. It's inevitable. And he describes it here. There's three terms he uses. It's from the Alter Rebbe in Tanya. Chata means inadvertence in. Pogam, blemish, more serious. Vaova and deliberate transgression. That's what a sin is. It can mean all these levels. He was distracted, didn't really mean it. He blemished. That's more, that's more intentful. And then there's with full awareness. So you would think that it's all over. It's all over. You got a recipe. This is how you make a cake. You've got to follow the recipe. What if you don't follow the recipe? You finish? That cake is done. It's not a cake. You lost the opportunity. It's wasted. It's finished. Next time, maybe. If you get it next time, do it right. But what you did, is, is irretrievable. And yet Teshuvah is higher and the power of Teshuvah is able to fix the past. At a rudimentary level, the consequences, it removes the negative consequences, which is a whole lot of things. It neutralizes Teshuvah. There's levels of Teshuvah, but there's even the most basic level of teshuva, which is, I'm sorry, I won't do this again, that cuts the negative consequences that crouch to pounce upon the Jew who did it. So it removes, it cuts, it brings atonement. That's the second level of the Mizbeach. Teshuva is higher than Torah and Mitzvah because to do teshuva, we've got to get dig deeper. It's a remorse. I mentioned there's many levels to teshuva. It's just the basic level is, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. It was wrong. And you don't do it again. That's good. And that's, that, that, that's effect. And if you're sincere about that, and that's effective to neutralize all any negative consequences, purgatory, punishment, whatever those words mean, but they, they're, they're real. They're consequences of sin. When we do teshuva and you renounce, in other words, when you renounce that behavior, I'm not doing this anymore. With that renouncement, the consequences of that behavior are renounced and cut off as well. But there's many higher levels to show that, just to give an idea of what, what true regret means. The Alter Rebbe said, he gave a Moshe. It was a story that actually happened, apparently, that there was a, in a village somewhere, there was a river, and there was a fella, but that it was a stormy day, the weather was very bad, and the, and the water was rough. And he wants to go to the other side on his, on his, after his boat. And his friends tell him, you go tomorrow, you go, you don't have to go now. It's, uh, the weather is, is bad. It's dangerous. Nah, I'm going. Okay. So he goes. And he goes under his raft. And then he's, he capsizes. And they hear him in the middle, no one can reach him. 
As he's going down, he screams, regret. Why didn't I listen? Regret and irrational, the word of Harota. Why didn't I listen to my friend? That's very sincere. That's really sincere. He really regrets the depth of his heart why he did this stupid thing. Said the Alta, but that's real regret. Not just, you know, it was wrong, I won't do it anymore. But what, I, but what I'm saying is that's a deeper regret. But even what I just described at the outset, it's not earth shattering and not fasting and not having sleepless nights. You just, you know what? That's it. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to be kosher, whatever. I'm going to do the right thing. Nothing earth shattering. That too affects atonement, renouncement, and cut. But that's higher than Torah and Mitzvahs because even to do that, you've got to dig deeper than the place that led you sin, to sin. Because why did you sin? Because you wanted to. And now I'm saying, no, I don't. Because I'm going deeper. I don't want to, that was an ex, my animal soul. That was my Yitzhahara. My real will is not to, and that's what I'm going to embrace from now on. No matter how dramatic that is, you're going deeper than where the sin came from, obviously. So it's a higher level. That's Teshuvah. So that, and certainly the higher levels of Teshuvah, they transform the past. That's, much, that's certainly way higher than, than, Torah, than ordinary Torah mitzvahs, which is, I enjoy, I love it. It fills me, it nourishes me. Okay, so conclusion of sec level number two, Teshuvah. That corresponds to what? That corresponds to the level of the Mizbeach, the word in the Mizbeach, the kind of sacrifices that bring atonement and forgiveness and protection. However, the third level. On them, however, we are the final paragraph on page 40. Shleim was in Yenhad Vekes by Yisbarech, the ultimate level of attachment to God is more than doing Torah Mitzvahs because it's beautiful and it nourishes and I love this. More even in Teshuvah, it's able to affect atonement and protection from sin because I've renounced it, there's a higher level. And that's the Aveda, Mr. Nefesh, total sacrifice. It isn't about me at all. The first two levels are about me. I love this. I regret my sin. I want forgiveness. It's self. Third level is not about self. It's about you. No agenda at all. Not even to get atonement. Level two. And certainly not level one for nourishment and panasa and all the benefits of nachas and all the things that Yiddishkeit gives in this world and the next. But the third level is, it's not my motive. Zesh Adam, third line now of the final paragraph. What is this level? Zesh Adam Meis, that's Atzmai, Mikol, Vokol, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He is where a person completely devotes himself to Hashem. That's the third level, the Kumai Oila, the the ascent offering or the burnt offering, she called to Hashem, nobody benefits from this. It's completely to Hashem. This is true self-sacrifice. He gives himself over, not for reward, or any benefit, not gashmius, not physical, or even spiritual atonement, forgiveness. No. Not even for a spiritual benefit. Only for the Without any calculation at all. And this that a person completely surrenders and devotes himself to Hashem. Next page, page 41. Top of the page, right hand corner. doesn't seek anything for himself. Quote, the third property of the Mizbeach that endears Yidin El Avim to the Heavenly Father. Clear. Let's continue. Al Pizeh, you want Teichram Shal Shleisha Mizbachers. Shabon Avram now will understand the three uh, altars that Avram built, which, as we said at the outset this morning, create 
pave the way, set in motion, create the foundation for the future Mizbeach and its functions that we will make for Hashem in the Beis Amigdash. And we'll understand why the first two were reasons and the third is not. We'll understand what those reasons were because it all accords. This is what he's creating for us. Let's see it inside. So I will understand the teichon of the three, the meaning of the three altars. The pechines ma'isa of a similar body, which Avram does as a portent, the foundation, bequeathing this legacy to his children. Shebehem in the Avram esayis Avram laid down the foundation, sim in the signs. Shloy shoyin yonim in the three general components. We avoid this Am Yisrael in the service of a Yid to God, the Meshech Kol Hadoidus throughout all the generations. They are number one, Hamizbeach Hardishin Hoya. Remember, why did he build the first one? God told him he'd have children, he'd have a land. Absurdus Hazerav, Absurdus Et Yisrael, the tidings that he would have children and he'd be given a land forever. What's that? Nourishment is a person's needs. A home, first of all, children. A home, land. This is a person's needs. Mean needs here, both physical and spiritual. Ubedugmas, amazing in brackets, that corresponds to the aspect of the Mizbeach, that what that nourishes, which corresponds to what kind of korban, the peace offering, the shlomim. It's one category. Then I'm his beach hasheni. The second is beach. She spilo shomaleim. Why did he build the second one? Not for nourishment, atonement. He daven the lechaper amaisa oven. Hashem forgive them for the sin of Achan, who had taken misappropriated. This is the second component of the Mizbeach. This is Teshuva, which Teshuva therefore removes the harsh decree, elicits atonement. So Rashi gave a reason for the first reason for the second, because there's an agenda for each one. The agenda for the first one is thank you for the beautiful news, the nourishment. I'm fulfilled. I'll have a child to carry on my name. We will have a land to live. You will, you promise that you'll fulfill our needs. The second is Be'ach. He brings about atonement. Rashi explains. He had a vision of the future, terrible sin, and he prays and he inspires to Shuva. Third is Be'ach. Rashi doesn't give an explanation. Let's see why. Now we know why. But the third is Be'ach when he comes to Hebron. Rashi doesn't say why he did it. Answer. The purpose of this altar, this Mizbeach. It's not for any agenda or benefit, side benefit. Thank you for this or for that or to elicit this or that. It's you. They live nice Hashem. The altar is an altar to God. End of story. For what? Not for what? For Hashem. my cardinal, this corresponds to the third category of carbon is the oil of the ascent offering. She called <coughs> she called the Hashem is completely absorbed by God, completely offered to Hashem. No benefit for the one who brings it. It isn't about what I'm gaining. It's offered for the glory of Hashem. This is the sign for the children. In this act of our patriarch Avram, what he did was he established and laid the foundation in the Mechav of Shemekarabonis, the third and highest level of the service of God, beyond Teshuva, which is, forgive me, it's you alone, which endears us to Hashem, it's the deepest connection, precious, Mechavev, when an offering is brought like this, 
No agenda. This affects the endearment, the attachment, the closeness in the deepest way, as we said before. Next column, the nimtz, and it comes out. That's perfect now. That's why it's in cover. Oh, we're going to see. We're going to see. Wait, don't try and second guess. We're living now. It's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll soon see why Hebron. It's beautiful. But that will be next week. It should be all well. So it comes out, the three altars that Avram built, is going from the lowest level to the deepest, or from the light to the heaviest. Harish in the first one, quoting Rashi, why did he build it? Because of having children, having a land in bracket, Dugmas Mason, that's nourishment. Hashem, the second one, higher level, and he prays for the deed of Ach and the sin. It removes harsh decrees, it atones. And the third one ascending higher still. He builds an altar there. No explanation. Stam, unqualified, no agenda. There's no additional in, intent. I'm building because. No, for you, that's all. Okay, the next piece. Well, we'll skip it. But it, it, this explains uh, and, and the nuance in Rashi's language. The idea is the same. Let's continue at the bottom of page Zion. Because to understand this next square brackets, we need to have the Rashi in front of us. And I'll tell it to you, it's, it's it. Zion. I'll be there. Now we're going to explain. We'll start. We'll continue next week. We'll also explain. The post expresses. With, also with respect to the third altar, you see the first two. He builds it there, we're told, because that's where he got the news, the news of uh, land and ch children of land or the prophecy of the future sin. It's all tied to the locale. How is it tied to the locale of Hebron? The Torah says he came there and he built it. And he's building now, we're explaining an altar that's pure sacrifice, no agenda. Not even forgive me. It's still about me. And it's connected to heaven. What's connection to heaven? Because dafke dafke heaven ki toich and in yonder shem mizbeach zeh. Because we're going to see now that the meaning of this third mizbeach, the highest level in the service of Hashem, true misiras nefesh, true sacrifice, shaykh leir heaven dafke. This is connected dafke to the city of heaven. Turn the page, page forty-two. Let's begin the journey in understanding this. as it's known, shechevren uloshen chibur. Chevren means chibur, attachment, as in chaver. Chaver is a friend. What is it? Because a friend is someone you are attached to. That's what the word means. Chibur, attachment. Chevren means attach attachment. Why is it called chevren in square brackets? Commission, why is this place called heaven? Commission is We've explained elsewhere the Rebbe says in another place, he spoke about this. The idea of joining attachment, especially unique to this city, to heaven. Why? Who's buried in heaven? Who's buried there? The fathers and mothers of all the Jewish people. The founders of all of us. It symbolizes unity of all the Jewish people. It's a principle that we talk about forefathers, mothers and fathers. We mean only the three founding fathers and the four mothers, not the subsequent generations. They are called our fathers and mothers. They're our ancestors. Father and mother is Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So the Rivka, Rochel, and Leah. Now, Rochel's not buried there because she's even the deeper. 
She's buried in Beis Lechem. But the founding fathers and Leah, Roch, uh, Yaakov's wife and, uh, and Sora and Rivka are buried there because all of the Jewish people are fused there. And furthermore, in the end of the square brackets, the whole lot feel us, oil us, out of the heaven. When we daven friends, all our prayers come to heaven and ascend from there to the heavenly throne. Hebron. So now we're going to see, continue next week, Hebron, which means to join and attach. The ultimate attachment is when my ego is not in the way. It's not about me. It's about you. So we're going to go deeper still, in yeah, next level, next level. Why Dafke in Hebron? He builds the third altar that's completely a complete attachment to God in the deepest way that endears us. We're starting to get a sense because this is the Mizbech that represents all the Jewish people. But there's more. And God willing, next week. Okay, my friends, have a wonderful week. And we'll see you at, at 10.15. God willing. Michael, share that class. Excellent share. Excellent share. Pardon? It's an excellent cheer. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed. Beautiful. Wonderful week. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov.